Mark Jones on Peace FM, and I'm joined by my colleague from the television side, Marlon Gomez. And today we have the honor of being with Dr. Banis, who, of course, residents of Chetwin know um, as uh, one of the doctors at the uh, Northern Health Clinic in Chetwin. And welcome, Dr. Banis. Um, so we just want to give some background to those that may not be familiar. Um, we had Clay Councillor Clay Bazandowski in. Uh, a few days ago, and it's yeah. been on Chet TV, on, on Facebook, that is, at least, and on. We had clips on our news, on Peace FM Regional yeah, News. Yeah, it's on our YouTube channel, too. Yeah. So we, it's in regards to a letter that's in the Coffee Talk, and with their permission, we're referencing it. It's coffeetalkexpress.com. Um, you can find it online as well. Uh, there was a letter, and I guess a couple different letters, including one, one from yourself, Dr. Bannis, and um, talking about basically... Uh, contract situation to give a little bit of background for the the viewer and listener that's not familiar up in this region here or not just this region in chetwin the clinic the the clinic that everybody knows to go to for doctors right now at least from the time i've been here in the last number of years it's actually owned by the city or sorry the district of chetwin right. the district of chetwin owns it but it's uh northern health is a tenant and because there's been a historically a really um tough situation with doctor shortages here um, you and your colleagues have been in a little bit different uh, pay scheme model. You're still paid by the government, but Northern Health is basically running um, that office in terms of the operation. Is that a fair way to describe it, Dr. Banis? Yes, absolutely. First of all, I wanted to thank you for this opportunity, Mark and Marlon. I, I, I really feel uh, honored to be here and uh, address this um, to you guys and the community uh, members. Um, so, uh, Everything what you said is absolutely true. This is a clinic that is operated by Northern Health. However, it's leased from the um, community owners. Mm -hmm. So um, since 2015, when I arrived in Chetwin, and that's the time when Chetwin became my home up, up until now, and it will continue to be my home. And I'm, I'm, I'm very honored and I'm very pleased to live in Chetwin. Um, we are at that time on a contract, which um, I, I thought it was a very good contract and um, one would hope that it would continue. And I think that it would attract more physicians to come. And from my sort of exit interview um, of my colleagues who left the community, because we had, we enjoyed at some point five physicians and that is when I had a amazing life, I could yeah. go to the gym and uh, I could play soccer with this gentleman sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah, oh, Maybe. nice. Okay. And yeah. uh, we try to outrun each other on the soccer field. <laughs> uh, this uh, gentleman left uh, at some point um, after they completed their return of service because they were uh, PRA doctors. And I can touch up on that and explain what that means Please, a little bit yeah. later. Um, so that contract was basically a blended model, something created to address this very critical situation at that time in 2015. Um, Dr. Venter and myself, uh, uh, Dr. Venter, a great mentor, um, a person who I will always revere for the rest of my life, uh, was the one who allowed me to transition to this community and take on an incredible responsibility but at that time, I was also enthusiastic, um, a, a new grad, and I thought that mm -hmm. Chetwin is a great place to practice medicine. I think that Chetwin has a lot to offer because when you practice medicine in Chetwin, you get to do everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm the guy who wants to do everything. <laughs> so since then, um, I've enjoyed practicing and um, inevitably the contract came to the end. Um, on the 30th of September of this year. And um, before that happened, we had negotiated a contract with the Northern Health and we were represented by Doctors of BC, which is our sort of union. It's yeah. previously known as um, uh, BC Medical Association. Okay. Okay. So it's a great um, uh, organization that we are members of as physicians. They support us in negotiating process. The contracts that are currently rolled out have been negotiated at the provincial level uh, through so-called Physicians Mastered Agreement. 
and um, another sort of fancy term is APP. This is what they called, which is alternative payment plan. Okay. It is a different type of contract that I've been here on and different yet from fee for service. That contract uh, is rolled out successfully in, in a lot of communities. And I think the APP I'm talking about, it is a great contract. However, the way it was offered um, and the way the negotiations went, uh, in my opinion, in my colleague opinion, Dr. Albayati and Al Kafaji at that time as well, as well as doctors of BC who are representing us, it wasn't really the contract in best faith. Mm. Uh, therefore, we could not accept it. Uh, it was more so about continuously increasing uh, responsibility, uh, you know, patients' caseload, mm -hmm. uh, complexity of the patients that would never re reflect. And the contract uh, is not just you know, about the, the money, because doctors make good money in general. Doctors are, po uh, are not poor. Yeah. And uh, there might be some, I don't know, I yeah. am not poor. Yeah. Um, what I struggle with is the uh, increasing complexity and responsibility. And in my opinion, the contract would not attra attract, that, that was proposed would not attract any new doctors to come voluntarily. Do right. you mind if I ask a question? So that contract that you're seeing right there, the APP one, that's the one that wouldn't attract people? That's correct, yeah. Okay, uh, thank just you to for clarify. Your... Yeah, and I have actually a follow-up, if I can ask, not to hold break your thought. Is it Was it significantly, or as they say in accounting terms, material? Was it materially significantly different than what you had been working under? Like what was being proposed versus, it, it sounds kind of like what you're saying it is, and maybe it's a silly question, but because you said they wanted to increase, and I'm not sure all the um, logistics, the complexity, maybe you can just sort of expand on that a little bit. Yeah. Sure. Materially would be uh, way less, but it's not a, the main thing for me. Uh, for me, uh, the main issue with that contract was that, uh, you know, with the complexity and the fewer, uh, fewer doctors in right. the community, you have gradually more and more responsibility and you are sort of... Um, offer a capped contract yes. that would really work when you have five or six physicians in a community uh, because no one like myself i i prefer to have a work-life balance mm -hmm. i prefer mm -hmm. to make less money mm -hmm. and then have a lifestyle like play a soccer yeah. go for a swim do karate which yeah. is what i do uh and uh have extra cur curricular activity. There are other things in medicine, trust me. <laughs> uh, so the other thing about the contract was that it, it was fundamentally, um, uh, in, in our opinion, doctors of BC, breaching on certain uh, provincially negotiating um, uh, uh, items, and that mm -hmm. was the overheads. So um, the APP contract that it's roll out, rolled out in uh, and the doctors are really enjoying it in Mackenzie, Fraser Lake, uh, Fort St. James, v I think Valmont. Those APP contracts there have no overheads. So if you're on some sa if you're on salary, yeah, because APP essentially sounds like a salary. It doesn't matter how ma many patients you don't have to see sixty patients. Right, you get this capped yeah amount of money. Um, so, so in addition, if you have to now pay overhead in a, in a, um, yeah, what would be considered overhead? Like for many people who may not know that, who may sure. Want to. So, what overheads means? You know, if the doctor works fee for service, they have overheads like a business. They run basically a business where they hire their um, medical assistant. They they have supplies. They they have software where they book the patients. So those are the overheads. And they pay the rent, the physical building. Exactly. All those yeah. Exactly. So those okay. are the overheads. And the beauty of the APP contract is that you don't have the overhead. The beauty mm -hmm. of our IG contract, that the, the one that was just terminated, was that we didn't have the overheads and we mm. could spend time with the patient, provide them with the comprehensive care that they deserve. There is a lot of complex patients that right. that they need time. It's not a, 
uh, you know, push through the door type of yeah. medicine that I've always had a problem with. I yeah. did not want to do that. And I'm not that kind of doctor. And I do not want to become one. Right. Um, to go back to you touched on Vailmont, which, you know, I, I'm, I'm familiar. And for those that aren't, you know, it's of north of Kamloops, basically. And, and, and But it's a smaller community, similar kind of thing. Did you get any understanding as to why, as I understood it, you said the the way the doctors work in in Vailmont and and the payment scheme um, systems, I say scheme, but you know a payment system would be different than what was going to be here. Did you get any explanation as to why? Like, are you saying the Vailmont system would be good and you would have wanted that here, or like, did you mm-hmm. get any explanation as to why there was going to be a difference? Yeah, thank you, Mark, for asking this question. So I'm just going to correct because I'm not sure about the Velmon. Let, let's put for, uh, okay. Fort St. James. Fort St. John. Okay. Yeah. Fort St. James. Fort St. James. Yeah, I said the word wrong. Yes, Fort St. James. Yes. If you will. Um, so their contract um, uh, is basically without overheads. Okay. Okay. So overheads, <laughs> you know, you can have overheads of, uh, you know, what it was offered to me uh, um, as a starting point, 96000 uh, a year overhead. Okay. Okay. So now, if you are working fee for service, you can sort of, um, you know, and I think generally doctors pay fifty to sixty thousand in fee for service environment for their overheads. Right. However, they can push enough numbers. Of, yeah. If I if I can use this word, mm-hmm. uh, I apologize. Push the number of patients to to uh, recover those overheads. Yeah. And. In addition, they have the autonomy, they have the decision making, yeah. how they're going to run it and how they're going to make it as efficient as possible. And I think the main struggle also here is that uh, the efficiency may not be uh, optimized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're saying that wasn't going to happen here then under the new negotiation. I, I'm just worried about that. Yeah, yeah, that I would be paying overheads perhaps with not having you know, autonomy that uh, I would otherwise enjoy. Uh, if I was working in fee for service or um, paying the uh, and then paying the overheads, so if I'm taking the sacrifice, let's say, let's put, I don't know how to use the better word for it, mm-hmm. and taking the APP contract, which I think it's a great contract, sure. I I should not be paying the overheads. Right mm-hmm. now, to go back, the previous contract, if we can ask this, and you know, I'm not trying to be too uh, personal on this. The previous contract that you were working under or, or contracts, you were not having to um, versus what was proposed. Proposed, you were going to have to start paying some some overhead. Previously, you were not having to pay overhead. Is that right? That's correct. Was there a reason that you were given that they couldn't just continue on with what was working, like status quo, what what you had before where you weren't paying overhead? Was that not an option that was given to you to, to offer? Do you understand my question? Uh, if you would rephrase so, it again, So please. basically the previous arrangement, payment, however, was like a flat mm-hmm. um, uh, a capped amount that you had, but you, you worked, you didn't have to worry about paying rent at the building or anything That's like correct. this. Was that option not given to you to, to move forward, like say October 1st, 2020 forward, they did not give you that option. That was not an option. Yeah, that was one of the items that I strongly advocated for Mm -hmm. amongst a couple more items that were very important. But from the very beginning, I I asked that uh, the contract is in a good faith. And what that meant to me was no overheads if we go Mm -hmm. in for APP. Because I think APP is generally a great contract. Mm-hmm. 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 And what Mark was also asking was, did they elaborate a little bit as to why they didn't want to or cover overhead, or they just didn't elaborate on that? Um, it is a tricky question, uh, and I'm not sure how to answer that because uh, obviously there are huge overheads in this beautiful clinic. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is a beautiful clinic and beautiful building with a. A lot of potential. Yeah. There's a, a amazing interprofessional team that can yeah. be utilized in a way that can provide incredible care to the patients because the physician uh, themselves, they cannot exist uh, yeah. without uh, wonderful people that they work with, professionals that they work with. Um, but that wasn't that wasn't an option, and uh, basically the uh, overheads were, were um, um, you know, in that contract, and that was one of the items that was really uh, something I advocated for, and I and I said, I mean, 
listen, this is a, a critical situation. Let's make this a, at, least, at least equitable to some mm-hmm. something like in uh, for St. James or, or those other APP communities, Mackenzie, for yeah. example. They have multiple doctors who enjoy it because they don't have these overheads. They don't want to have anything to do with the business aspect of the medicine. Right. They want to practice medicine. I'm, not, I'm that kind of the guy yeah. as well. But if you are on APP capped, in my opinion, you should not be paying the overheads. And it's not just my opinion. It's a provincially negotiated thing, mm-hmm. uh, my understanding was. And doctors of BC was supporting us in this because that's I wouldn't know better if it wasn't for them. They right. help us to guide us to the negotiation. Right. And so was all this negotiation where you like actually, I guess just at some point you're actually in conversation with somebody at Northern Health um, and then it's sort of almost the, uh, like a, a combination of um, the doctors, if I'm using the right term, doctors of BC, the former BC Medical Association, as I would know it as, and then uh, Northern Health and yourself. Were you doing, like, you were having to talk to Northern Health to some degree directly. Is that correct? That's correct. So we initially have a meeting where we uh, sort of started uh, introductions and uh, presenting uh, mutual interests. Mm -hmm. Uh, From then on, uh, we had doctors of BC to communicate with their office uh, and things were going back and forth until we would hopefully meet somewhere in the middle because they started from that and we started from there. Right. And hopefully we could meet somewhere in the middle where you could come to the table and talk. And, and that, unfortunately, didn't happen. Right. Uh, because I thought, and the doctors of BC who supported me in the entire process, not, not I, I mean the other doctors as well, because I'm speaking for other doctors as well, Dr. Al-Bayati and Al-Kafaji, it was fundamentally breaching uh, you know, the good faith of that APP contract. Right. So I'm going to jump ahead if it's all right with Marlon. Or go, Marlon has a question. No, do you mind about, yeah, before we go ahead. So we discussed, uh, obviously, the benefits for a doctor to be on the APP contract. You know, yeah, we should definitely let doctors have a personal life so that, you know, your well-being. I mean, we like to, we forget sometimes to look at, you know, as our medical professionals, as human beings who also have mm-hmm. to deal with their feelings and their mental state. And part of that means that you need to go have a personal life. So that's great that that allows that. But from, and pardon my ignorance on this, from someone who wouldn't know, uh, why wouldn't, why wouldn't that be the case that they would want to do then the APP contract? I mean, what would what would be perhaps some drawbacks on on Northern Health side or on any other business that would say why? Okay, here's why we don't want to do APP. Is there are there several reasons or no? I, I I think that they were uh, that they, they, there'll be a APP contract here um, okay. for the doctors that are coming. However, will be with the overheads. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's I think that 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 was my problem. Yeah. You know, and let let me tell you this as well because uh, even if the APP contracts here were with the overheads, and there were not one or two doctors but five doctors, yeah. I would go for it. Right. I would just go for it because I want to have a life. Mm-hmm. What I worry about uh, are they go- are, are they gonna be doctors coming? Yeah. If if there is a contract that it's um, less than in Tumblr rich or, you yeah. know, with the responsibility that we have, which yeah. is, you know, the hospital care, long term care, inpatients, emergency 24 hours yeah. and the clinic. Yeah. And and you raised a good point, I think. And, and you know, I've only been here less than a year, but I mean, the, I mean, uh, for the doctor situation, I think drill it down to here in, in Chetwin, the specifics, there's some unique I think what you're saying in dynamics in a smaller community, um, it's not just where we hear lots of communities. Like I know myself on the coast for a while, I didn't have after my doctor retired of many years, didn't have a family doctor. But you have choices. You could probably find a doctor somehow, one of these other clinics, you know, a walk-in clinic. People here don't have that choice. And the problem is just getting the doctors into the community to 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 be available. This is some unique um it's not some simple like situation, and it sounds like there's some complexities that, if I if it's all right for me to say, it sounds like maybe um, there's the whole picture isn't being looked at by various government uh, departments, however you want to put it, whether it be Northern Health or something like that. Is that a fair comment? Absolutely, uh, Mark. And I, I, 
I really uh, appreciate you you bringing this to to the light because this is a, a small community and uh, obviously a, a lot of small communities have the, a lot of struggles. The Chetwin is not the only one. But as you said, there are other options in uh, certain communities where mm -hmm. there is a walking clinic that there is, uh, uh, you know, more options for the patients to enter uh, the clinic or access their care. Mm -hmm. Whereas here we do have only just this one clinic yeah. and uh, no one there working. Um, and patients have no, not much choice, and and then they end up traveling to Dawson Creek or for St. John, and desperately reaching out for help because they cannot yeah. otherwise have that option that you just mentioned. And that's, I mean, you know, people sometimes don't stop to think about it. That's a hundred kilometers each way, mm -hmm. and if you don't have easy access to a car, if you don't own a car, you don't drive. This is this is a huge thing. Like even me living on the coast where I would travel, you know, easily between, you know, one community to another. 100 kilometers, I was never having to travel 100 kilometers on the coast to go to a doctor. And that's one way. That's 200. So that's a long way to go. I, I'm going to jump in just with this if, if I can. So we, we've got, a, I think, a fair picture and you're welcome to add whatever else you want to this. What I wanted to go is we went to after we had Councillor Bazandowski in bringing this forward as a, as a public service uh, thing to say, do we realize I knew nothing about this situation going on until I read your letter and, and all that. So I thank uh, the Coffee Talk Express and Councillor Bazandowski bringing it forward. I reached out to Northern Health. I called them and I got a copy of the email. And, um, you know, basically this is the email for the viewer and the listener um, I got from Erin Collins, who is the uh, spokesperson. I'm just going to see her official title here again. Um, she's the spokesperson with Northern Health. I'm um, sorry, I'm just flipping around here because that part of the email got cut off. Erin Collins, anyways, I'm going to tell you what her, her comment was. Um, I can share, and she says you can. I could attribute it to Northern Health in general or herself as the spokesperson. Northern Health cannot comment, I'm quoting her here, quote, Northern Health cannot comment on the specific details of physician contracts. I can confirm that in this case, Dr. Bannis, the contract had expired and we could not come to an agreement on an extended or, or new contract, an extended or new contract. We are pleased that Dr. Bannis will remain in the region, and we'll cover that off in a little bit here, and continue to provide primary care services. Northern Health continues to work hard to recruit family doctors and nurses permanently to the community to improve the stability of primary care provider access in Chetwind and to explore a variety of models for physician compensation aimed at attracting and keeping doctors in rural and remote areas. And then, end quote, and she just says if there's any other thing, and I apologize, I don't have her exact title here for some reason, it's not showing up on the email. Oh, here it is, Regional Manager, Public Affairs and Media Relations, Northern Health, and she's out of Prince George. So, okay, she responded, and I want to be crystal clear here, I don't think any of us here, including yourself, Dr. Uh, Marlon, or myself, we're not trying to um, make this political. We're simply yep. doing it as a as a public service. I mean, to the right to have a doctor or, uh, and again, it's a unique situation. Lots of people don't have doctors in, in parts of BC because of various situations, a uh, uh, lack of family doctors. But this is, and I, I can genuinely, having, having dealt with you and you're a very good doctor when I had to come in there, um, it's disappointing to hear, I mean, if I ever, I'm healthy, but if I ever need something, I mean, all of a sudden, now what do I do if, if there's a doctor, you're not in the clinic, you're going to stay in the community, and that's what I was going to come to in terms of in this area, in the South Peace, but I understand now you've come to an arrangement for now with hopes of still being able to maybe work in a different way out of this clinic in Chetwind. You're going to be working out of the Soto First Nation. Please, you, you add in what you want here and just any other comments and then about the Soto First Nation, how that's uh, going to work and how that came about. For sure. Um, yeah, thank you, Mark, again. That, 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 that is a very valid uh, concern that, that you brought. And I, I'll just start by reassuring uh, or try to reassure that, uh, first of all, this is my home and I'm not leaving. And I'll be here for my patients, whether they have been my patients or they're not. I'll be available to anyone who needs care in this town uh, and I'll do the best I can mm -hmm. as a single doctor or perhaps um, eventually doctors will join me. I'll do my best to um, 
you know, within my human, uh, you know, ability to provide everybody with the care that they deserve. Right. And there's a, a lot of patients that do need and d they do deserve the quality of care. And it is, this is my, in a, you know, on top of my burnout what, of what, what I'm doing is the sort of bit of a moral damage that I feel that the patient feel that they cannot access the medical her, uh, mm -hmm. care, the fundamental medical care. So when my contract was terminated, um, I ended up all of a sudden without a sort of, eventually there's a lot of complexity around it, but essentially I ended up without a space to practice. Mm -hmm. And I was not in, uh, in a position to leave, uh, even though perhaps other physicians would just walk away and leave. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, for those reasons, I stay in the community. And um, I um, was able to, um, uh, I was supported, I was reached out by sort of First Nation chief and council, who I think saved, you know, me and saved the town. Um, and they provided me with the space and the work opportunity. And um, they say, they said, we are welcoming other patients, whether they are members of the band or not. Right. And this okay. was a huge because I yeah. felt that this is something uniting. Yes. In this era of sort of racial t tensions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is such an incredible statement that uh, they actually um, express and post it that I felt so reassured and relieved that in the last for the last two weeks I actually started started to be able to sleep again. So <laughs> this is a transition. Uh, while I'm working there now, just to give you more details, I am also um, seeing uh, or providing um, patients with the care the members who live in Chetwind whether they are me uh, members or not. The other options for patients who need to be seen in office and they cannot travel there, I am going to, uh, there, are, there are great things to come. And uh, as they come, I will uh, notify or one way or another disclose this uh, next steps, uh, sure. you know, as the time comes. But uh, the other option is that I do have a, a potentially a space in the local pharmacy where I can do a lot of help um, uh, provide the care to the patients in town who cannot travel or oh. they need to be seen in person. Okay. You know, if we can say anything good about COVID is the innovation and the, the technology that yes. has improved and provided this incredible opportunity. And um, because of that, I, I, I'm still able to continue. So thanks to uh, sort of First Nation Chief and Council and uh, everybody involved in helping me to set this up, I was able to stay and I was able to continue to provide the care to my patients and to whoever needed me. Well, first of all, I'll add, I mean, yeah, we're, we're grateful. I think we can speak for the citizens here, the grateful and I am that you're staying and, and thank you for that. And I'm sure the people that have been here a long time and have, I know a lot of, I've heard a lot of people taking you on almost as a, as a family doctor or as a family doctor. I'm sure that's reassuring to them. And we must thank the Soto First Nation for um, stepping up and helping and also being willing to be open to if I'm not, um, you know, I'm not part of that, the community in terms of uh, Aboriginal heritage and, and things like that, then, you know, we're welcome to come there because that is a big concern. And I, you know, mm -hmm. and I guess that's just, um, you know, like you say, something good because maybe with some other technology things and things with COVID now that I've heard some doctors have adopted to contact patients, maybe those things will come to to being as well is what I think you're saying. So absolutely, it yeah. is exciting. I just want to say that uh, there are great things to come. You know, with the autonomy that I will be able to regain is um, what well, it comes with that. Uh, the technology innovation and the support that I'm receiving currently is that, uh, for example, a electronic medical record um, that I've been implementing. Uh, will facilitate the process of medications refills, consult, pro uh, uh, process the consult faster. Uh, in fact, the patients, uh, the ones that are technology savvy, um, mm -hmm. they can book their own appointment on that EMR, which is incredibly exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, 
how this is going to go. I won't be um, faxing the prescription as a paper to the pharmacy. It'll be going electronically. It's just right. incredible how we're going to speed things up and how we're going to um, efficiently provide everybody with the care. And I can reassure you that I'll be here and whoever needs me, I'll provide the information. So please stay tuned. There'll be yeah. information released as um, uh, as the next few steps because it's a transitional, very bumpy uh, sort of uh, period of time for me uh, because of all the obstructions that I encountered. But uh, I can guarantee you things will get much better. We'll, we'll get uh, set up something very good. I was just going to ask, so do we know if that's sort of like, are they hoping to do it like long term, like that partnership between you and sort of First Nations? Are we hoping that to be viable for a while? Yes. Yeah. So it is. Uh, and uh, again, you know, as I mentioned, I'm staying here. So this is uh, for years to come. I'm not leaving for four years. I don't know how many years. Yeah. Or, or stay. You You're know. committing long term. Committing long term yeah. is the right word. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. uh, and uh, I will try to work things because there's other things that I am maybe not able to disclose yet. Sure. Uh, sure. But it'll be coming. But it's a multidisciplinary type of work where um, offshoot of what I'm doing there can be done in town as well. Right. Uh, with a lot of professionals working. You know, sort of similar. And I'm don't mean to do it in a, in any way of competing with it. It's just to be uh, comprehensively able yeah. to provide the care. So, so this is what coming. It's uh, my long-term commitment. It's good. Uh, the only thing earlier you mentioned though, that possibly I mean, right now it's just a single doctor, but uh, have there been talks perhaps that it could be more than just one doctor out there? Yeah. So basically up until my relationship sort of got, um, uh, impacted because of the negotiations. I knew for sure that uh, uh, there are two doctors that are committed uh, to come uh, to work as of, uh, I believe, March oh, wow. of next year. To uh, per, like the Soto? Uh, no, no, uh, to the town. Oh, okay. With and Northern they, Health. With Northern Health, yeah. Okay. So I think that, uh, and I don't know how this is going to play out, whether because they have obligation to return of service. Mm -hmm. There are doctors, as I mentioned initially at our interview here, uh, um, the PRA stands for Practice Ready Ass Assessment Doctor, okay. who undergoes um, assessment and has to pass certain tests. Mm -hmm. Then they practice uh, under provisional license. They have a return of service and they come here for uh, three years of return of service. Okay. My dream is someone who comes even for longer because yeah. it's mm -hmm. great, because the lifestyle is good, because yeah. they fit the community, because the contract is good, because the, uh, there is a mutual respect and mutual work with the Northern Health Authority towards something good. And I think we can do it. We can work towards something good and not right. abstract each other. I guess a couple questions I have here are just, first of all, for um, the, the viewer, the listener that's wondering, um, are you open right now to, like, can people contact you somehow if they need to see the doctor? And I guess we should back up. The Northern Health Clinic, as I understand, still as of right now, does have a doctor. Am I correct on that? Or? To my knowledge, there are two physicians now that are locums. Okay. Locum meaning that the doctor comes from somewhere else okay. and they provide sort of temporary service uh, um, and they leave um, and new doctors come. So, right. so uh, it is a bit of a patchy in a way that I think that the care should be always longitudinal in a way that, you know, if, I, if I'm if i staying here and I'm seeing my patient, I know what's happening with the patient. If right. they come and go, that... that poses certain challenges. Mm -hmm. But the, to answer briefly your question, there are two physicians, mm -hmm. to my knowledge, currently in the clinic taking the phone calls. There's also, I think, virtual physician. Mm -hmm. And I'm I, I, and I'm a physician as well. And this is <laughs> this is a phone number that they can reach me and I'm going to uh, oh, disclose we'll post it. it on our Facebook sure, pages yeah, and yeah. stuff. Uh, before I, um, uh, what I'll do uh, in an, in the next week or so, there'll be official uh, phone number okay. to call and book with me. But meanwhile, they can, for example, text me to this number uh, sure. if it's an emergency and I will try my best. So you are reachable. Now, for those that don't know, like I'm still getting the geography down. I know everybody says Google everything. Soto First Nation, where is that in relation to if we're in Chetwind, 
the hub or we know where the clinic is that you've been working out of, how would you get to Soto First Nation, if that's a question to ask? Should we answer this one together? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> uh, absolutely. I, I mean, it's a beautiful drive, uh, yes. and especially in the, in, in the summer. Yeah. Uh, it's about, I think, was it 15 or 18 kilom kilometers or maybe more? Uh, yeah, it just depends on what part of the lake you want to end up at. But yeah. I think uh, for every, anyone that's familiar with crow feathers, uh, the gas station, yes. essentially just very, I would say, less than half a kilometer from there, there's a turnoff. And so you're taking Highway 29, 29 which takes you as if you're heading to Hudson's Hope in that, exactly. correct? Okay. Yeah, and you just take it all the way until you, like I was just saying, you pass Crow Feathers, which is a gas station, and then okay. not too long does it turn off on your right. Okay, so it's before you get to, to Hudson's Hope, because I've only done the drive from that way to here once, and I'm trying to place all these different landmarks. So yep. so it's well before you get to to Hudson's Hope. Oh, basically. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm just for the person that doesn't know the area. I know some people are going to say, well, you must know that. No, I don't. So I'm asking mm -hmm. on the benefit of that. So um, I don't know. I did. Was there anything else you wanted to add, uh, Dr. Actually, Bennis or Marlon? Yeah. I actually had a question. I mean, you know, a, a few of the residents here, we, we've had the discussion of always wondering, you know, why don't doctors? I mean, we have we've had this issue for a while and we understand that. Uh, mm -hmm. Personally, there are reasons why, uh, for example, let's say like if you come with your wife and your wife doesn't like the area, then you end up having to move. There's different personal reasons as to that will come up with different doctors as to why they don't stay. But I've never actually posed the question to someone who was, you know, a doctor in the community who has worked with other doctors. Perhaps the question itself, aside from, I guess, the financial side of things, are there reasons that you've heard expressed as to why doctors wouldn't want to stay here? Or that's not that's not something that's been expressed. Uh, this is a, a very loaded question, and I, I think there's a lot of complexity to it. Mm -hmm. But what I can say is that it takes that money is one thing, you know, but it's not really, you know, you would be surprised. I mean, if you graduate and you need to pay your bills mm -hmm. uh, and your loans, that that is a, a a very important factor. Of course, but uh, it does take a certain uh, type of personality uh, and um, you know whether the family can come and the spouse can get a job as well right. does this person uh, has this person lived before in the north yeah. I had great medical students who worked with me mm -hmm. uh, from Hazelton from uh, you know um, uh, Prince George as well so so they were uh, coming from the rural areas myself i uh, used to live in dawson creek when i was a physiotherapist back then and i came back in here so if you if you invest if you invest this type of uh doctor um assuming that the contract is right you know and um and the, the treatment that you receive is is respect you know mm -hmm. then these these new dogs, they can come here because they've been coming and uh, checking the, 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 the places. So it is, um, you know, if someone is, uh, is culturally totally different, it might be a bit of a challenge. Right. It might be diff uh, you know, whether it's religion, whether it's, um, you know, things that you do, hobbies, uh, are you the outdoorsy guy with hunting or fishing or completely not? Or, right. Or is there, is there um, you know, we had great doctors who were, um, you know, they were uh, Muslims, very nice doctors. But, you know, there's, I think, Let's not as easy for them to practice yeah. their religion. So there's lots of factors that. Yeah. And, and then these doctors would come and they would stay I think if the contract was right, but you know the way uh, we trying to recruit, we just have to also check, maybe look into without breaching sort of fundamental yeah. human being rights. You know, what is the potential for these doctors to stay? Will they stay after right. their return of service, which is three right. years? Well, yeah. I mean, let's be frank about it. And the reason why I ask about that is because, at the end of the day, and that's what I was mentioning earlier on. You know, lifestyle. Uh, is one of the big things that should play a role. Mm -hmm. Then family and commitment, you know, whether your spouse or significant others can find jobs up here. Uh, but then the question has to be posed, okay, but how can we work it, make it then worthwhile for someone to then look at that and say, all right, I'm gonna have to do all this, but it's worthwhile for me because. So what's what would be that in your, in your perhaps opinion? Because I don't even, I've never asked a doctor that here. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna try and pretend to answer something I don't know. So do you maybe have like any thoughts or ideas? 
aside from the I guess financial side or is that is that it is that the only thing that would make someone really reconsider yeah I I think you know the huge thing is the family you know mm-hmm. I I think you know the doctor's job is fairly challenging and yeah. uh, I currently have a wonderful girlfriend who supports me uh you know in my crankiness at, at the yeah. end of the day and uh, and if it was kind. <laughs> Thank you, Marlon. <laughs> she had I can s- vote for you. <laughs> she she had the same thing to say about you, uh, <laughs> to reciprocate what you just said. But uh, uh, you know, if you have your family and you have your children and uh, with you, and they um, they can come with you and they can support you, you know, the chances are that that you will stay longer, you know, mm-hmm. and then you will mm-hmm. enjoy. Because then what happens is you 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 make connections. You know, yeah. I have great friends in here. Uh, uh, Mr. Basandowski is, is is really a prominent person, and I really uh, enjoyed listening to his um, uh, interview yesterday. I think um, you know his advocacy, you know, for this for this town is, is tremendous. Um, uh, I've got a lot of other friends here, uh, Rochelle Galbraith, who is also involved in council, and a lot of councillors mm-hmm. there that Meldeg and you know Alan Kutrell, the mayor himself, and. Uh, I apologize if I didn't uh, mention everybody mm-hmm. in here, but they they are I consider them my great great friends and uh, I feel so much welcomed by them that uh, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, almost unbearable for me if I was to leave and yeah. um, see. But this is what I want people to hear because yeah. we're doing this so that hopefully somewhere somehow down the road we can help change this and yeah. put a spotlight on it so that you know other doctors perhaps who do get to watch this say, all right, hearing it from a doctor, let me see what he has to say, as opposed to, you know, this guy who just works at TV and I try and speak for a doctor in your lifestyle. I can't well, do that. And I think, um, you know, I'm sort of connecting the dots, not to put words in your mouth, but I mean, I know even, you know, there, there's, um, in terms of, I think you, you painted a pretty good picture because it can be very, um, what's the situation for one doctor, maybe not staying, is going to be something That's different right. for someone else. I know just as somebody coming to the community here, and I had a pretty good idea of what I was coming into in, in terms of smaller, growing up basically in the lower mainland. Um, the fact of the matter is I'd never lived up here. I'd never been to this specific part of the province, as far north as Prince George. But I, I know there were people that said to me, oh, it looks like it'll be very boring there. And it's like, well, I guess it depends on what you want to do. If you want to be able to go ice skating, if you want to be able to do different things, um, it depends if you need to have you know, I don't know, like uh, three dozen restaurants nearby you or some, I'm not saying you, but somebody does or or different things. Yeah, then it's not the place for you. But I guess it brings me to my question. What was, if you don't mind me asking, what was your background? Like what's your 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 journey? You said you were in physiotherapy in, in Dawson Creek. What's your journey to, to being here? If you want to give us oh, that, yeah, a little oh, bit of yes, that. Yes, for sure. I'll try not to, you know, uh, spill the entire chapter of yeah. my life because <laughs> it's a great chapter. I mean, uh, I'm an immigrant. Obviously, I came, uh, you know, with this, um, you know, hope and great ideas uh, to this country as a physiotherapist and ending up in uh, in Dawson Creek. From what country, if you know what I mean? Yeah. From Poland. Poland. From okay. Poland. And I remember when I arrived in Edmonton, I thought I was going to take a cab or bus uh, <laughs> to Dawson Creek. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. because you I found out the truth. <laughs> I yeah. found out the truth, spending my last uh, um, $300 on the, on the plane to Grand Prairie where I got uh, finally picked up. And my journey started in Dawson Creek. And it's incredible because, you know, the adaptability of a person depends on a lot of factors. But I found that anything that I needed in Dawson Creek uh, was there for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I the same thing, anything that I need in in Chetwind uh, is here for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, People can take me uh, for fishing, um, for hunting. You know, I I teach the classes or before COVID I did, um, you know, I, I am involved in a lot of things mm-hmm. that, that keep me in this community. Um, and I think I just sort of, <laughs> my thoughts are wondering, <laughs> what was the it's original okay. question? Well, I was just oh, asking, no. you answered, I think what I wanted, the key points, like I wasn't sure 
I mean, I don't assume, I didn't know if you had immigrated here or, or not. So you're right. from Poland and you started out originally in, in the physiotherapy field, which obviously is medical, but then you, did you go back to That's school correct. and go to, to become a doctor? <laughs> Thank you for bringing me back on That's track okay. in here. Uh, yes. So basically I, I enjoy practicing physiotherapy for seven years in Dawson Creek and, uh, you know, knowing me and just uh, always, always being curious what's around the corner, I wanted to, uh, you know, um, you know, go further. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what I did was I went to Northern uh, Lights College to do uh, English first year. You know, then I did some pre-med courses in Kamloops because I did have to finish them. And then I ended up going to the Northern Medical Program. And I was lucky enough to get into the uh, um, University of British Columbia Medical school okay which i uh, successfully um uh completed and even was awarded um a, a special award for you know um a community doctor uh, when i graduated which which was a you know huge for me distinguished uh, we don't just have a doctor, we have an award-winning yes, doctor. Yes, exactly. Well, yes. I don't need like to it. sort of rag, brag about no, it. But no, it was, no, uh, you might as well be <laughs> proud of it. That's good. No, so. that's good to yeah. be proud of it. I wanted to, yeah, take the pride of it for sure. And then um, ended up doing the residency in Fort St. John mm -hmm. when I graduated. And the very last rotation of my residency I did in Chetwind. Uh, and uh, there were Dr. Shreves in here, Dr. Van der Heide, wonderful doctors, and Dr. Venter, mm -hmm. who whom uh, I consider a great mentor and great friend. And I think if it wasn't for for him, I wouldn't make that connection. And, right. and, and you know, in Dawson Creek, even though uh, I had to leave Dawson Creek, even then it was hard for me to leave because I already made that connection for seven years. Right. I come and I make connection. I'm, I'm, I'm not a locum doctor per se. Like I don't, right. I just like to make a connection, emotional yeah. connection, because I right. think I'm a bit of an emotional guy too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've got That's a okay. question. I've got a question. Maybe I'll wrap up from my my part here. Um, is the door not to bring it back to this, but is the door, as it were, closed to you ever? If Northern Health wanted to talk to you about, you know, somehow coming back into the clinic, which I know right now you might mm -hmm. still arrange something. I've heard the rumors about or, or something. I made a bit in your letter. Is that option like closed, if I can ask that question? Or? Of course, yeah, unfortunately it is um, uh, because I offered one or two days working the clinic under um, all the restrictions or conditions that they were uh, putting if, if I was to work there. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, that uh, didn't work. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> my FOB has been deactivated. Um, but um, oh, your FOB for the door, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> your access card. Okay, yeah. But just yeah. to clarify, you mean under those restrictions, that's what would make it tough to really spend some good quality time with a patient each time. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Because right? that's an important point to no. make. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, if that's not what you're willing to compromise, I feel like that's something that we should talk about. Absolutely. Because we're the ones that go there and we see you. I don't know about you, but when I go to a doctor, I don't want to have the doctor looking at the watch at his watch at the clock saying. I can't hear the last thing about, you know, your arm because yeah. the clock is ticking and you have to go. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. seems to have become, you know, having been, you know, I've got a few years on, on you, Marlon. I know that. And I mean, I had a doctor um, for, let's say, a couple decades um, in, in, in Richmond. I kept my doctor in Richmond even when I was in a different part of the coast, mm -hmm. but I wasn't traveling 100 kilometers to go to Richmond. He retired. But he was, you know, there was always a time limit. If you went in and you said, okay, I have three things to talk about. I was like, boom, boom, boom. Okay, just whatever, get it done. Now I've heard a lot of the situations and it must be somehow guided by whatever that the doctors, I don't think they'll sometimes bend the rules, but a lot of the time they're told almost, or it seems they're told, you can only, you know, you have time for two questions, like something. I was like, oh, can I get my prescription refilled? Can I ask you about this? And then I think I actually I heard either myself or someone else one time said, not here in the community, but somewhere else, if you want to ask anything else, you need to book another appointment and come back on mm -hmm. another day. So it sounds like mm -hmm. there were some of those restraints maybe going to be implemented for you. Is that fair comment? Um, uh, Mark, I, I, uh, to sort of rectify that, it's more so um, with regards to, you know, uh, the, how you would book your patients, uh, how many you would see, perhaps right. what hours you would be working. So you you are sort of fee for service where you 
paying overhead yet you don't have that autonomy to right. to to run it the way you need to yeah because let me tell you doc, a doctor's job does not end at four o'clock okay yeah doctor's job finishes when the job is finished yeah yeah uh, and that might be another four hours or that might be more hours yeah that might be saturday and sunday i might be painting my apartment and i'm gonna get called from to right. help and then i will rush to help and this is the nature of the job that we do so um as it stands, I can't enter the clinic because I wanted to bridge this transitional yeah. period of time. And my suffering was that I could not uh, stop thinking about a lot of um, sort of results or my patients mm -hmm. that, that, that needed the follow up yeah. and they, um, they needed to be seen. And I wanted to bridge that. And I offered, can we do one or two days? For those who cannot travel, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, let's say to Soto First Nations Health Center, uh, and therefore um, I offer, I did home visits. I yeah. went to see the. I, I basically tried all my best, all I could, including yeah. home visit, coming on Saturdays to the hospital to help uh, people, um, because I couldn't do it easily uh, due to obstructions yeah. that were put right. in front of me. Yeah. Now, will you be given that? autonomy at Soto First Nations? Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. And I guess my only other question is, and then, um, you know, unless we've got anything else specifically, is um, what about person's records? Like somebody that's been dealing with the medical records. Mm -hmm. Like I know if a doctor retires, it gets archived and you can ask for a copy or something mm -hmm. like this. Like you haven't retired, but you've, you've left the, the Northern Health Clinic. How would that work with somebody? Can people mm -hmm ask for their med records to be transferred to to your new operation or thank you mark for asking this because this is very uh, <clears throat> important question um it it was about to be explained but the way it works is that the um doc uh, the patient um if they choose to let's say uh, me as their family doctor mm -hmm. they they just sign the release of information and that the um file cannot be uh, can be transferred to my EMR um, and then I can take them on. And even if that happens, uh, they still can enter the clinic in here. Right. You know, that they, they, like a lot of uh, patients, uh, they may be seeing a physician in Dawson Creek because they can't enter here yeah. and back and forth, right? So, so they can have actually, you know, option to, to get the file transfer. Right. Uh, they just have to sign it and we'll try to uh, make make this transition as easy as possible and uh, the form also will be available at the pharmacy okay. pharma choice pharmacy uh, to sign it and um, that way uh, northern health um, can help us out to to transfer some of these files because i can't remember my own notes yeah. basically i have to refresh my mind yeah and and that doesn't mean that the, their files are erased right okay it's like yeah. a duplicate or something like that a safely Precisely. duplicate and i didn't mean to jump in i didn't know if you were gonna you know you said you were gonna discuss that so i didn't know if we were gonna get to that or not so that's why I brought it's a very it up, important so. question yeah. it's very important yeah I don't have anything else, Marlon, or are we, no. uh, Dr. Bannis, is there anything Marlon, else you want to add? I just wanted to thank um, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, this emotion okay. comes out of me. Take it's okay. Roll. But I hope you won't be hurt. No, <laughs> no, no. That, um, that someone reached... Uh, and helped me to get through because I was under a lot of uh, emotional stress and uh, and you unnecessary. We cut out there because the battery uh, gave out on us. But, you know, you were essentially thanking the community. And the reason why I say it's important that people should, you know, hear that is because sometimes we get to see doctors for, you know, your title. But we, for whatever reason, can't separate the title from the human mm. and we have to remember that there's a human behind that and there are some very incredible humans yeah. behind that and that's why i was saying you were just saying to me oh marlon perhaps don't include that in the interview and i said no no because that's you dr bennis mm. and we need to see that humanness behind you guys because mm -hmm. that's what essentially drives you to do all of this so i'm sorry we got cut but continue you were saying you were saying that you were thankful for someone reaching out to you and allowing you to let you practice 
Thank you, Marlon. Uh, I apologize for this. It does uh, uh, no, sort of okay. um, uh, make me emotional when it comes to care for the patients. Um, I wanted to thank the community. I wanted to thank um, sort of First Nation Health Center for uh, and Chief and Council for uh, this incredible opportunity um, for the community members for for their patience, for their understanding, for their you know supporting me mm -hmm. in what I'm doing. It is going to be a bit of a bumpy road, uh, road for a little bit, but it's gonna smoothen and it's gonna be good. And it's gonna be great. It's gonna be hopefully uh, working along with um, health authority, with all the nations, uh, no matter what your race is, no matter what you're thinking your religion mm -hmm. is, no matter who you are, you deserve the care that you do because you are a human being, and I'm your yeah. doctor, and I will stand on the, on the guard of your of your health to my best ability, yeah. and I'll t pretty soon tell you how to easily access me, easier access me. Okay. Do you so, want anybody just ask for me one last thing? Yeah. When you were saying that you you were you felt like or you were battling for your life, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Like, why was it like that? There were obstructions put in front of me that made. Uh, me uh, sort of mentally suffer in a way that um, you know as physicians we are accountable to uh, college uh, which is our governance body for not abandoning the patients okay so uh, I wanted to reemphasize this again that I would never abandon my patients though I ended up having two weeks of break since January mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as I mentioned the burnout was the uh, one aspect of it but a bit of a, a barrier and obstacle that I encountered or the treatment that I received was the the uh, contributing factor to my <laughs> emotional suffering and a bit of a you know struggle. Well I'm sorry you went through that and yeah. I can't begin to say I know what your journey was because I don't know and I mean and that's you know in terms of what you exactly went through but just sharing that that that's, I think, something very um, 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 good of you to share those things, you know, I mm -hmm. mean, in terms of that you went through it, there's no shame in, in saying that, like the, the spotlight on uh, people, you know, more and more showing emotion, you know, of one degree or another. And I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, but I'll conclude it from my end yeah. here. I, I want to thank you, Dr. Banis, and it sounds like you'll be making sure we're aware and through the Coffee Talk Express, uh, dot com, the online version, I'll give them credit again um, th and letting us know, myself and my colleagues and Marlon on the TV side and his colleagues. Uh, thank you, Dr. Banis. Uh, we've been joined here by Dr. Banis, uh, well known here in, in Chetwind and still going to be in the area. Uh, Mark Jones with Marlon Gomez from Chet TV. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.